In this video, we're going to be taking this mining server case, which I've previously done a video on. Uh, I got this from Amazon. And we're going to be attempting to upgrade it to an i7 processor. Previously, I did a video on this mining case. Uh, this is one of the, actually, at the time of the recording, the cheapest eight, G, the cheapest eight fan, uh, basically GPU pre-built mining server case you can get on Amazon. Uh, there is a cheaper variant that only has four fans. This one has eight, four in the front, four in the rear. And it comes with a uh, two core Celeron processor. And today we're going to be attempting to upgrade it to the top of the line uh, LGA 1155 socket i7. So this was the best IV bridge processor there was. It's the 3770K. Uh, these aren't very expensive right now. You can get these on eBay. Uh, you can still buy them new, but I actually got this one used off of eBay. Uh, this particular one I spent, I think it was $80 on, uh, but it came with the original box, comes with the original heatsink, everything. Uh, the reason I went with this one, I wanted to make sure I had a processor I felt was well taken care of to try to put in this unit, because I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work or not. Uh, it does have the same socket, however, these Chinese firmware or biases aren't really upgradable. Right? There's really no manufacturer for it. Can't really find a BIOS update. Intel doesn't put out BIOSes for their desktop um, motherboards anymore. Uh, it is a B75 motherboard, which means it's also not overclockable. So we're not going to be able to overclock this. So the key thing here was getting a CPU that was eight cores, maximum amount of cores that this socket supports with the highest amount of L3 cache we could get. This one has eight megabytes of L3 cache. It's a four core, eight thread processor. So what that means is we will be able to run uh, algorithms like Ghost Rider with uh, four cores because of that eight megabytes L3 cache. So that was kind of the idea behind this was, let's take our GPU mining rig, let's take it to the extreme, let's throw the best processor we can in it, without having to change out all the guts. We've got that. We've got some Noctua um, NTH1 thermal paste. And this is the Thermalite AXP90 X53 heat sink. So this is a low profile heat sink. Now we did have to get a low profile because let me go ahead and pop this case off and you'll see. that this section right here where the power supply goes, there's this bar here, and the CPU sits right underneath it. So in order to essentially be able to put a decent heat sink on here, we needed to go with a low profile design. So that's what we did. So let's go ahead and let's get all of this taken apart. We're gonna get the CPU out, or get the motherboard out so that we can start working on it. Uh, technically, you could probably do the swap on the with the motherboard installed, but we're going to remove it uh, just because it's going to be easier, especially going with an aftermarket heatsink. We will probably need to get a back plate underneath the bottom of it. All right, we're gonna undo the fan, and here we can see the heat sink, and right off the bat, you can see, look how tiny that surface area is for our thermal compound. It's essentially nothing. That definitely would not work with an i7 for sure. Let's go ahead and pop out CPU. And let's go ahead and wipe off the thermal compound on here. And 
then here we can see, I'm not sure if that'll focus or not, but that is a Pentium G2030. We're gonna go ahead and I'm just going to set this here for now. Let's go ahead and get our i7 out. Get it popped in the socket. If you've never swapped out a CPU before, the first thing you want to do, especially if you're buying used, uh, but it's also a good idea with new, is to wipe, just wipe the top with some isopurple alcohol, uh, especially if you're touching it with your fingerprints, uh, to get, get it cleaned up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dock it. This one's actually pretty clean. So we're going to go ahead and dock it. Close the lid, lock it in, and then we will clean it up. Just give it a quick wipe here with some isopurple alcohol. All right, excellent. We'll let that dry itself off. And we're going to take the old CPU, put it in the storage container, packing material that the new one came in. Set that to the side. And here we can see the CPU cooler that came with the new one. It is an OEM CPU cooler. We're not going to be using that. Um, but if we wanted to, we certainly could. Uh, but I would be very cautious using that one uh, if you're trying to ramp this thing up. It might, um, it probably won't overheat too much if you have sufficient cooling but it's better to go with an aftermarket uh, cooler. And this is one of the best ones that you can get uh, for what we're trying to Our new cooler's all installed. Uh, so we got the CPU in, we got the paste in, we got the cooler in. So time to go ahead and essentially reverse install and let's get the motherboard in. Let's get all the graphics cards in and let's hope it boots up. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Everything's mostly installed back in. I just haven't uh, secured the GPUs or the power supply, but I can do that once we verify everything's working. Right, let's go ahead and power it on. And we're gonna start hitting delete. Hopefully we get display. We haven't got any beep yet, so that's good. Perfect, we're in the BIOS, we've got display. Whew. So that's good, it's detected. We've got our i7-3770K, ran at 3.5 gigahertz. And here we can see we got four cores, eight threads. We've got eight megs of RAM. And I don't think we can see the L3 cache here. Head down the CPU configuration. Uh, yeah, we can see it. So we've got eight megabytes of L3 cache. Uh, everything looks good there, and as I mentioned, uh, this motherboard doesn't support overclocking uh, in the BIOS, so we're just going to go ahead and um, exit out. I think I got everything all back together. Uh, we've got our power supplies back in and mounted, 
obviously our motherboard's mounted. We got all our power cables connected. Got all of our GPUs back in. We've got our hold down bar in place. Got our power switch hooked up. It looks like everything is good to go. So let's go ahead and power this on. And we'll get our keyboard out. Just to be able to check things. Go ahead and boot up in the Hive OS. Okay, it's detected all eight GPUs. Go ahead and zoom in here on the screen. And we're running a CPU miner right now. That was the flight sheet that was loaded. And we can see right now our CPU temp is 36 degrees. And it looks like we're mining S script R16. Uh, right now our hash rate looks to be around 160 hashes per second. Not sure what coin that's mining, but that network hash rate's almost 42 mega hash. Hmm. Three days to find a block on that one. Just let that spin up for a minute. And let's go ahead and open up the Hive OS app on my phone. And we will load up a GPU and CPU flight sheet and see how hot the system gets and how much power it consumes. Uh, with the old CPU mining Vertcoin and Varus at the same time we were consuming 440 watts and on Varus we were getting half a mega hash. So let's go ahead and switch over to that and hopefully we gain some efficiency. Uh, just checking the CPU temps, it looks like we're sitting at around 65 degrees. So we're good with the cooler. Everything looks good there. Let me go ahead and find that flight sheet. Uh, here we go. That flight sheet should be activating any second now. Looks like our hash rate did go up on that old algorithm, the 380 hashes a second. Let's see if that flight sheet activated or looks like it's still trying to activate. There we go. Um, oh, whoops! I activated the wrong one. This is the one I need. Oops, activated an NVIDIA flight sheet and we are on AMD. It actually probably would have been fine, uh, but we'll switch over to more optimized miner with Team Red Miner. There we go, Team Red Miner is spinning up. I'm actually gonna switch to the actual miner view here. And here we go, we can see four cores, eight threads. Choosing all eight threads for mining. All right, it's gotten work. Let's see what type of hash rate we're looking at here. 
we're looking at around 6.1 mega hash. Let's check our power consumption. I'm using the um, Casa app for my smart plug. And it looks like what we're at, I'm not sure if this will show or not, might be too bright to see, but we're looking at around 473 watts. So we had an increase of about 30 watts, but we went from half a mega hash to 6.1 mega hash. Uh, it's fluctuating a little bit there. So say six mega hash. So for 30 watts, we got 12 times the hash rate increase. So that is really nice to see. Let's see what our CPU temperature is at on this algorithm. And it looks like we're rocking around uh, 75 degrees. So we should be okay with the CPU. Let me go ahead and put the cover back on. And let's see if that goes up or down at all. So we got the cover on. Our CPU temps are still hovering around 75, 76 degrees. And unfortunately, we're not able to undervolt this, so we're kind of stuck with whatever we can do with the cooler and with the mining case itself. But so far, uh, it seems pretty good. The one thing I do want to try real quick is to turn up the fans. And let's see if it will cool it down. Let's go to the max. All right, we'll go ahead and turn those fans back down. It looked like we dropped about two degrees on the CPU temp, uh, but the good news is it is hovering right around, um, at least on Varus, it's hovering around that 73, 74 degree temperature, which I am perfectly okay with, uh, given that it's such a restrictive, it is a low profile cooler, um, and I am definitely okay with those temps. Uh, so definitely happy to see that. I'll have to test some other algorithms. The nice thing with like Ghost Rider, the majority of the time, it's only gonna be using four cores. It's not gonna be using all eight threads uh, because of that two megabyte uh, L3 cache it needs per thread. So those definitely aren't gonna be running very hot. Uh, most of the algorithms won't run hot. This will probably be the most heat generated out of any of them just because it utilizes all of the CPU. But I'm definitely happy with this. We got uh, just a little bit more power increase in consumption, but we definitely got a lot more hash rate on Varus. So come time, next pool run, this will definitely be helping us out. So definitely happy with these results. Uh, if you like this video, drop me a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And I think I'm probably going to go ahead and start upgrading uh, my other server cases that I have like this. Uh, my plan is to move all my open air rigs into these cases. Um, pop some i7s in them. Uh, I'll probably try to sell my Rebtex and get everything fully encased. Uh, I really like the fact that these uh, do work with the i7. I was, that was one thing I was worried about with the uh, BIOS really not being upgradable, that I'm definitely happy that works. 